So, welcome tout le monde, bienvenue tout le monde au Conseil municipal de la ville de Westmount pour uh, lundi le 4 avril 2022. Welcome to everybody, and I think we'll start with a few uh, comments from everyone, but I just would like to, first of all, thank anyone um, and everyone who came to the demonstration last week um, for Ukraine, and it was, it was a great, uh, it, was, it was a wonderful turnout on a very rainy night, but I think if anything, uh, this weekend when we all looked at the media reports uh, coming out of Ukraine, that it was, it was incredibly important as a community, and people were really glad to be there as a community to show their, their support to the Ukrainian people. And I had committed to some people at the event, um, and we're continuing to work on this, to work with uh, Mr. Garneau's office and Madame Macron's office to see what we uh, what we can do collectively, um, because there's so many in this in people in the city that are asking. So uh, stay tuned. We will hopefully be able to post some stuff on our website on that soon. So now I would turn it over if we have any other council updates. I'll start uh, at this end of the table. So I will start with Councillor Kaz, who has uh, some public security updates. Hello, good evening, thank you. I have two updates from the Public Security Department. Um, public Safety received their new fleet of five hybrid patrol vehicles, which are slowly being outfitted with equipment from the retired vehicles. These vehicles will have a new look, which was originally an idea for the department's 40th anniversary back in 2020. The vehicles should be ready for the road at the end of the month, just in time for the nice weather. So that's the garden vehicles. Now, the second item is regarding leaf blowers. Leaf blowers are per permitted between April 1st and May 1st, Monday to Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., not on Sundays or public holidays. If you hire a service to clean your yard, please make sure they respect our bylaws. Leaf blowers used must have a manufacturer decal showing that it's a category one machine. Respect other properties and never blow debris on city's property as it can block our sewers. If your yard can be cleared by hand, this is always a better method for the environment and less bothersome to those around you. Lawn maintenance services must also have a valid gardener permit issued by urban planning, safety, Public safety officers will be out verifying. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Council Kez, for that update. And uh, our last meeting was in person. It was our first one back in person. And so at the end of the meeting, what people may not have seen online was that the four. Sorry, the last. Uh council meeting that we had at the end of the meeting what the viewers online wouldn't have seen and only uh, there was not a huge attendance in uh, in city hall was that the four officers who had intervened with the young woman who had uh, tragically been stabbed on um on the maison of the four officers had come in uh so the council could thank them personally so it's uh, i'd like to reiterate how uh, how grateful we are to the public security team and uh, they are in constant contact with uh, with the victim's family, and she continues to uh, she continues to make steps towards getting better. So, um, thank you for your updates on that. And the street cleaning uh, signs went into effect. So, move your car on your street cleaning day. Uh, Councillor Aronson, I think you have a you have an update as well. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So. Um, at a previous meeting, uh, I was asked as the Commissioner of Sustainability to give a report at least once a month on initiatives that, uh, that I, as my commissionership of the city, are undertaking in the direction of uh, furthering our uh, profile and sustainability. So I'm going to give a very brief report here of things that, that, that I have been doing, things that are ongoing, and things that are coming up that people should deal with it. Um, in the last few weeks, I've had a wonderful opportunity to meet with some extremely active stakeholders, people, concerned and citizens, who uh, are all louder. They're louder. Maybe here. Exactly. Yeah, I can use this. How's that? What? No problem. It's my pleasure, Jim. I want to make sure everybody can hear me here and at home. So. I have an opportunity to meet with some very active and concerned stakeholders, citizens. We're very concerned about the state and the health of our urban wildlife. We had a wonderful uh, meeting. A lot of great ideas were raised, and many of them are going to be brought forward as policy initiatives in the coming weeks. 
Um, Earth Hour was observed across the city uh, to great effect. And I thank all of the residents who took the, moment, the, the time to turn off their lights for an hour uh, on, on the day we observed Earth Hour last week to show their commitment to reducing our impact on the planet. Uh, we have an ongoing project of uh, green accounting or uh, a carbon accounting through our finance department, uh, which as you imagine this time of year with taxes being upon us is something that they are still working on. And I look forward to being able to report back with uh, Council Nico when that project lands the, uh, the corner and we've got some substantive uh, material for the public. Um, this past week, I uh, passed uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the city uh, for, for allowing me to do so. I attended virtually the Globe Forums, net, uh, the session from the Globe Forums uh, annual um, convention, which was held in Vancouver, I, myself is here in Montreal, uh, pertaining to net zero climate uh, uh, initiatives for municipalities. And again, very, very helpful for the uh, ongoing analysis of different measures that we can take in the city. Uh, we are, of course, as a council, constantly engaged with the administration in new and, uh, and projects for the betterment of the city. Uh, and every single one of them is an opportunity to add trees, green space, and measures to help us manage wastewater. Uh, so uh, I count this as an ongoing project. Uh, um, and, and then upcoming, upcoming we've got a couple, a couple of couple announcements. announcements. On April, April 19th, 19th, we're going to start with garden waste collection. collection. And of course, if you prefer to drop, drop off uh, at public works rather than on um, um, we well, to pick up here. Welcome to do so. Uh, we have, uh, we have, uh, April the 23rd is going to be a, uh, a household hazardous waste collection day. Traditionally, that's at Victoria Hall. I believe that's going to be the case again this year. Uh, but of course, check the website for further information. And, um, April the 19th is Earth Day, and we'll be organizing a big cleanup of Westmount Park. Uh, and, oh, I'm sorry, April the 22nd is Earth Day, and that's the day we'll be organizing a, uh, a cleanup of Westmount Park. More information will be forthcoming through the website and through, through the council meetings to communications. Um, and of course, I encourage all residents, as the snow melts and reveals whatever is left behind from the uh, if you see litter uh, or uh, garbage that's been strewn from the streets, uh, this is a wonderful opportunity for, for each to take some initiative and pick up uh, around our own homes and places that we frequent and not wait for the city to deploy public goods to do so. If we all pitch in, we're going to have a much cleaner city much faster than if we uh, sit back in. So I encourage everybody to take action. To take action. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Councillor Aronson, Councillor Gallery. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Spring is in the air and it's now time for the city to start cleaning up our streets, our roads, our sidewalks, our public stairs, our fields, flower beds and parks and basically all of our green spaces. There's a lot to do, so please be very patient with us. Um, just so you know, most of the plantings, cuttings and irrigation systems will be starting in May. Uh, the clay tennis courts spring cleanup will start mid-April, weather permitting. We've already started uh, the cleanup of the lawn bowling green and uh, again, weather permitting, we'll be able to use our fields and parks uh, like we wish to. It's very wet right now, so please be patient. Um, I'm very happy to announce that the Westmount Scouts will be coming back for their annual cleanup of the Summit Woods. That'll be taking place Saturday, April 23rd. Uh, we provide the scouts with garbage bags uh, that day, and then we pick up the bags once they've completed the cleanup. Uh, just an update on the special tree distribution. The deadline for requests ended at the end of March. So now in April, we go out for prices for the trees, and we'll be doing deliveries in May. Um, again, weather dependent, time dependent, but uh, coming soon. And lastly, very happy to announce that the Somerville Tot Lot will be opening Ideally, mid-April, uh, we're undergoing the final safety verification for shock absorption, which we have to wait for the, the ground to thaw for an accurate test. And uh, we'll keep you posted. And we really look forward to getting that open soon. I know we've all been waiting and very patient. So that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you for those updates. And especially, it's important to hear the park updates, especially at this time of year. And I know that Mr. Fretz is here and he's always very concerned about Summit Woods, so I'm thrilled to hear the scouts are up there, but it obviously needs much more uh, 
much more than a one day cleanup and a continued education of residents and people who are using it, how fortunate we are to have this urban forest and it takes work like everything to protect it. I know the DG and I spent some time up there with residents who live around the area and, and walked through as well to, to look at how we're planning and the investment that's going into summit was this mo- this summer, in particular around the, the trails um, and, and ensuring, as uh, I've discussed with Mr. Fretz often in the past, is this widening of the trails and sort of a, which is leading to the erosion of the undergrowth. And uh, so a lot of work and focus is going to be put, on, put in on that. So thank you for the update on that. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to join the scouts in their, in their cleanup. Um, but we are fortunate with that, uh, with that urban forest that we need to protect. Councilor Bostock. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just to let you know, uh, unfortunately, our public works department has had a significant number of COVID cases lately. Uh, unfortunately, that means that there are going to be some delays in getting some of our seasonal work done. Um, so I can assure you that as soon as we're back to full numbers, uh, we will be back to clearing sidewalks, getting grit and gravel and uh, getting our crews back out there in full force. So please be patient, but I can assure you that uh, the work is going to get done and we wish everybody a speedy recovery. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Peart, I don't believe you have an update at this point. Councillor Shami, no. Councillor Rue, always which is good, means we're returning a little bit more to normal. Exactly. People at the library are happy to see everyone again and have been very busy organizing different events. Um, So I could go on for practically the whole council, but I won't do that, the whole sitting. So uh, down to a few. I've mentioned the book sale. It's actually going on this weekend. So Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. There's going to be lots of books because it's a three in one. It's the past two years that didn't happen and this year. So I encourage you to come. I think it will be fun um, shopping. Then with things that are also coming back, there was a lecture that was canceled that was called Art Space Ecology. So that's back on Saturday, April 23rd. It's going to be with John uh, K. Grande, the author of Art Space Ecology, Two Views, 20 Interviews. Uh, So that should be very interesting. If you'd like to come, it's open to library members and you need to register on Eventbrite. For Earth Day on April, Tuesday, April 19th, there's going to be a movie showing of Beauty on the Wings, Life Story of the Monarch Butterfly. Um, With the director is going to be there, Kim Smith. uh, So there will be quite question and answer period after the film. Um, it's a 56 minute narrated a documentary film that takes place along the shores of Cape Ann and in the heart of Mexico, forested volcanic mountains. For how long? Yeah, I just. A second? Okay, so all good. Um, And then finally, on Sunday, April 24th, will be Westmount Platinum Party to celebrate uh, Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee with the traditional English tea at Victoria Hall. You'll see vintage uh, images of a royal visit to Canada in 1957 and 1959. We're told there's some really interesting and fun events movie footage that we'll be seeing and you'll get to enjoy a concert highlighting the works of English composers. So hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rue, for all those updates. And I know, uh, obviously, we're following very closely all the public health guidelines, uh, but it is wonderful to see uh, events happen again um, and to be able to connect with people outside of the council chamber, like we did with uh, Councillor Bostock and Councillor Peart a couple of weeks ago, it was our first sort of council event. Um, and it was a reminder how, how it's important to get back to doing those events. So thanks for the update. Uh, Councillor D'Amico, no update. Okay, so now we'll move to the first question period, la première période de questions. Est-ce qu'on va commencer avec les questions en ligne? Ou après? Ah. Ça me sent si on va commencer avec Monsieur Fratz. I 
You can one more. I think you have to you have to stand at the podium. Oh, okay. I thought you're doing so like that the... all our online viewers can uh, can okay. see and hear you. Oh, there I am. Okay. There you are. <laughs> and since I... you're standing alone, if you would prefer to take off your mask, and okay, then yeah, no. okay. Um, I was just curious by uh, item eleven, the forestry engineering firm that is going to do a. Um, uh, an inspection and evaluation of the city's urban forest. How is this like a really in depth or a what, what is the scope of this? And the kind of second question I had is, I think we were talking about doing stuff up there at the summit. Does this does do we need this report to go ahead and do those things? I'm going to. We we suspected that this question might come because this item is on the agenda, and council has discussed this. So, Councilor Gallery is going to answer it in more detail for you. Thank you. Basically, oh, sorry, am I on mute? Okay. Um, sorry. First of all, our horticultural team that works for the city is managing a continually evolving and changing tree planting and tree felling list regarding all our trees so this forestry engineering firm is an outsourced group that adds a third opinion for the inspection and evaluation of all our urban forests so it's like a and they're on call for decisions and supporting information and um and background support for additional work that we do throughout the city okay Summit Woods, which those trees have already been identified at, mm -hmm. at Summit Woods. Yeah, the, the ones that are striped either blue or red? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting because um, I've been withholding a question on that. I don't know how many I have. Uh, last year, the, this, the tree felling was done in winter and a lot of sawdust was left there. I mean, like in some places it was, I'm not exaggerating, like a foot deep. And then it was sort of cleaned up. And there are things which I don't really know about, but uh, uh, the emerald ash bore and, and, and ash trees, were, the, the, some of the trees, were, the, the logs weren't removed. It, it, um, I don't know who did it, whether that was a contractor or the city, but I thought there was some things about the, that felling which might be improved. Uh, on the other hand, i got to say what's terrific about it, when there ever, whenever it's the city fallers they always seem to place the logs in a very judicious place where it kind of emphasizes the trails or yes. stops people from traipsing through the woods so uh you know I, I really have nothing but high marks to give them but uh anyway so i, I see what you're talking about and um, the only other thing which is uh, a follow-up and i promise to leave is it says here uh, because i know the report prepared by purchasing manager which is submitted at this meeting this me does it mean this meeting? Can I look at the report? No. Which report are you referring I'm to? I'm looking at, at item eleven. Uh, and it says here, uh, West Mountain Urban Forest tender invitation by yada yada and minutes prepared by the city's clerk's office are submitted to this meeting. In other words, can citizens like myself see these reports, or or is it because uh, I don't see anything? Uh, listed on, on the, you know, like they have like PAC meeting, or they have, you know. Yes, you may, sorry, you may answer this. So uh, any document that is public can be accessed through demand uh, and information. So you do an access request and it will be studied by our department here. Okay. And uh, then you can have access to the public documents. Right, 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 right. So you have to go through that route to get, uh, get anything. Yeah, okay. And uh, yeah, this is... And this is your last question. Mr. My really last question. Have other. Um, when you go to tender, as you say you, it here in, in, on February 2nd, uh, uh, the, the, the publicly open, tenders were publicly opened on February 2nd. Did that invitation go to council? Like, was it approved? Do they have to be approved by council? We're approving the tender now, or tonight. Okay, okay. So it's not, it's not pre in order to open the, the envelopes, it doesn't have to go to council prior to that. 
Maybe I'm being a little confusing. Anyway, okay. <laughs> if I need it, I, thank you for all these questions. All right, thank you, Mr. Fretz. Next question, question question. Yes, hi there. Um, so my name is David Searle. I'm a resident on Kensington in the Councillor Aronson's uh, district. Thank you. Um, and hello, uh, Ms. Mayor. Hello, Councillors. So hello. I have a question. Basically, um, I think it's really exciting the uh, sustainability uh, that we're you know developing in Westmount. Um, so this new project to have, for instance, uh, accounting of uh, greenhouse gas uh, impact. I think it's great. And I'm here tonight, not because it's uh, my favorite thing to, to do on a, on a weeknight, but... Um, you, may, but you may just become a frequent... I, I might, guest. I might, hopefully, uh, anyways, we'll see. And, um, but basically, the, it's, it's just, it's springtime. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing I've been uh, kind of campaigning for in the Westmount Independent through a couple of articles was that we stop cutting some grass. Mm -hmm. Right, so letting some oh, yes, land yes. go fallow, and there's Suzuki reports on this, and and it's um, it's a very interesting, you know, cost saving measure. It is going to piss some people off, right? Because <laughs> grass is with us since um, Versailles. That's where it started, grass, um, and it uh, and it's and you know it's in our culture, right? We like grass, and but it's it's really a dead thing. It doesn't really have any life. And so obviously one day I hope we'll, we'll be beyond grass and it's not for tomorrow morning, but I'm wondering if city council will have the courage to say on our land, not everywhere, you know, Westmont Park, we need grass, you know, we use it. But like there are lots of strips of land in Westmount that aren't used heavily, that are mowed with um, carbon gas, power emissions yeah. and, um, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about, so on, in August, the council, uh, and we're talking about butterflies, monarch butterflies, and we have a little cute monarch butterfly symbol in the park, but that's pretty pointless when you think you could have wildflowers attracting, um, yes, wildflowers attracting uh, these, these butterflies and birds and insects. And, and it's really, you know, it's life. And we're, we're kind of used to having a, a septicized, environment where everything is you know asphalt and and dead but we can bring life back well, we but, certainly so my question is yeah okay um is council willing to try it out this spring to not cut some grass in some of the lesser used portions of public land i think it's something that we could certainly examine and you talked about the monarch butterflies and so it is larger than just that little patch they look at it uh, we have a team uh, at public works that has looked at it throughout our parks to to have different areas like they're all by the WRC that in that ravine is also an area that could be yes, more beautiful. optimized. Um, but it is certainly something that I think we'd be willing to discuss. Uh, and it's, yeah. And every little small measure, we are a small city, two by two kilometers. We have some beautiful parks and people love their parks. They love their green spaces. But I think every little small measure that we can do as, is important. So every time we go to rebuild something, we need to look at it through this sustainability lens as well. But also in our, in our, our, our parks are our greatest infrastructure. Yeah. And, and sorry, if I can just add another question, comment is, is, you know, can we look outside of the parks too? Because parks are often heavily used, but but, you know, but, you know the Dorchester median, median is not, not and, and it's mowed and it's crazy. Um, could we not let it unmowed and, and we would have a huge space there for, for uh, wildlife? So this bugs, the, which are essential for, for the life. commitment that I'll make to you is that we will work with our public works team uh, and the and our arborists there uh, to see and our horticulturalists to see what uh what we could do what what measures could we put in place this councillor aronson i think wants is is ready that he's dying to have a comment on this i am dying to comment on this i just wanted to actually say thank you for bringing forward this question i promised you fellow councillors i did not plant this young man in the audience but i happen to agree with absolutely everything you said and i will continue to push forward the ideas we brought forward to this council in the hopes that we might be able to do something in the short term yeah, we just have to stop mowing. It's not so hard. I mean, yeah. No, but you also brought up the, the point of equipment, which is something that this council needs to tackle. And it's 
how we deal with our green spaces as well, right? So yeah. other cities and, and our nation's capital is moving towards getting rid of all those gas powered uh, lawn equipment. That is also one small measure that we, we can work towards as well. If I can just take ten, two seconds more, I'm so sorry. I, I don't come here often, so maybe I'll take two extra seconds. Is that we're just happy to see people? <laughs> <laughs> You're so sweet. Um, thank you. And uh, yeah, I was so I'm kind of obsessed with these things. And uh, in uh, by Leonard Gros Metro, the borough has let the the grass grow. And I spoke to the guys who were cutting it last spring. So what they do is that they cut it at the end of the season. They have subcontractors come in with you know um, a wicker, whatever it's called. The, you know, the spinny thing. This is up. So it's not it's not specialized equipment, but all to say, you know, it's done in the Southwest Borough, so that could be a contact. Thank okay. You. Thanks for your input. Thanks for all your work. Really appreciate it. Thanks. I don't think there are any other questions in the audience, so we'll go to our online question. Oui, Madame la Mairesse, nous avons reçu une question aujourd'hui, laquelle nous vient de Monsieur Andrew Potter. La question est la suivante. Why is driving in Westmount like driving through a bombed out city? Do we have a policy against repairing roads? Uh, I think Councillor Bostock wants to comment, but uh, thank you, Mr. Potter, for your question. And while we do have potholes, I don't think we are quite as bad as a bombed out city. Uh, and there certainly are patches and there's, there's sections of streets that are in dire need of repair. There is an online, um, an online form that you can fill in to notify a pothole, but as has been explained to it, I mean, it is, it is patching a problem, but I think Councillor Bostock wants to address it in further detail. Really just, um, it's it, the weather that we had this winter has had a huge impact. Um, February saw 19 freeze thaw cycles which and three times the amount of rain that we normally see uh, that was recorded in that month. So the reality is that that climate change has had a significant impact on uh, the potholes. But I can assure you um, that despite COVID uh, being in our public works department, that, that we have crews that are out there day and night uh, filling the most severe uh, severe ones and then uh, getting to the smaller ones as, as we move through them. So uh, it's a, every year we have the same issue um, and it's, it's a, it's a constant. And so we are, we're working to, to fix that all the time. Yeah. And I think it's all the more reason why we have to keep uh, this pace of infrastructure work because a patching a pothole only lasts for a certain amount of time. Um, but thank you for your question, and I think all of Council shares your, uh, shares your thoughts that there certainly are a lot of them right now. And I think Mr. Grove, that's the only question that's submitted, and I see Mr. Grove has his hand raised. Don't ask him for lui demande. Hi, good evening, everybody. Hi there. So I note on the agenda this evening there is a... Um, expenditure to be approved for Hydro Westmount in uh, the neighborhood of $900,000 or so for a rehabilitation of the, um, of the grid. And it, Hydro Westmount is something I've sort of looked at for the last few weeks, uh, months even, I would say, and that I note that the city budgets Hydro Westmount, um, the, the, the electrical grid and, and things that are required to bring hydroelectricity to our home, plus items that are really required of all municipalities, such as street lights and uh, stop, uh, stop um, traffic signals and, and things of that nature, all in the same sort of accounting function. So if, if, I, if I read the financial statements of the city correctly, things that fall under Hydro Westmount seem to be uh, a real catch-all or, or a grab-all item. Um, and then at the end of the day, we seem to lose money in Hydro Westbound. So maybe does anyone really know how much of Hydro Westbound's revenues and expenses are, are related to the actual delivery of hydro to our homes? And, and how much of those revenue are, are really, I guess, just the expenses because there's no revenue in delivering 
hydroelectricity to the, to the public streets or, or to the, the traffic signals, uh, how much is that, that expense in the financial statement related to uh, or, or have anything to do with, with, with hydro West responsibility to generate a profit? I guess what I'm trying to get at is, is why do we lose money on hydro westbound? Do you want to take first? I'll, I'll just answer it quickly, and then I think Councillor Shammy wants to weigh in. And I know that you have asked this, uh, you have raised this issue in the past, and I have certainly appreciated it. And it is, it is something that we are uh, always reflecting on. But what what we also do, and so I guess to the people who might be listening to this question, I'm going to simplify it a little bit. Like. What are we paying for versus what if we had uh, Hydro Quebec servicing this city? Right, it's a little bit of a gist of it. Is what what you're asking? Well, you're, you're, this evening, you're approving a nine hundred thousand yeah. dollars expense versus revenue that that doesn't justify that expense. So how well, do we how do we move forward with this? It, it, uh, I don't know if I would agree with that, but what I would say is that the investment that we do make in hydro, and so when we redo our roads, when we do, that it is an infrastructure investment that we have to make as a city. Um, I think Councillor Shammy wants to add a few more details on that, but it is also important that we, we can control that investment, um, which other cities may not be able to do. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. And can you hear me? Or and thank you, uh, Mr. Grove, for a very, very important question. So, yes, uh, we will get back. I'll get you the actual figures. You were looking at our financial statements and how well, Hydro Westmount uh, fits in. But as the mayor alluded to, we are unique. There are nine municipalities in the province of Quebec that uh, maintain and sustain and run their own hydroelectrical uh, uh, power grid. And it makes us unique. Yes, uh, tonight I, I'm moving, uh, as you uh, eloquently mentioned, uh, a nine hundred thousand, a seven hundred ninety thousand uh, dollar expenditure, as the mayor mentioned, to rehabilitate, to to upgrade. I mean, we live in a hundred and fifty year old city that needs upgrading our infrastructure and Hydro Westmount, uh, our grid needs to be uh, brought for brought up to date. But, um, you know, the mayor last year in the uh, mandate prior to the election, uh, uh, I was very fortunate to be uh, asked to chair uh, a committee of, White, of West Mount Hydro to look at some of the questions that you're raising. And with great respect, Mr. Grove, I, uh, the administration and I will get back to you on the figures that you raised about, uh, you know, why has Hydro West Mount's um, uh, profitability gone down. I mean, one of the reasons are we have less users than in the older days. With the Montreal Children's Hospital used to be part of our grid, it no longer is there, as you know. So there are reasons uh, in the metrics, but a very good question you raised. Our committee, our uh, committee are going to look at, uh, we'll look at many of the vital questions about the sustainability, how do we maintain, what are the pros? What are the cons? And uh, you have my uh, commitment to get back to you after I consult uh, our administration. So thank you for your question. I don't see any other hands raised. Uh, so I will, we will now move into the next part of the agenda. On va commencer avec uh, numéro 4, l'adoption de l'ordre du jour, Conseiller Chamy. Uh, merci, Madame la Mairesse. Uh, je propose que l'ordre de jour de la séance ordinaire uh, du Conseil de 4 avril 2022 soit adopté. Merci beaucoup. Un appuyeur is the seconder is Councillor Peart. Numéro 5, encore Conseil Chami, à proposition du procès verbal. Merci, Madame la Mairesse. Je propose que le procès verbal de la séance ordinaire du Conseil tenue le 21 mars 2022 soit approuvé. Thank you. A seconder on that will be Councillor Bostock. All in favor? Carried. Item 6.1, item 6, reports to Council 6.1. The following documents are tabled. Letter from the service du greffe of the de la Ville de Montréal with, uh, avec l'objet règlement. 04-047216, règlement modifiant le plan de de la Ville de Montréal, 
0-4-7, résolution CM-220131, bylaw 04047216 of the Ville de Montréal, entitled Règlement modifiant le plan d'urbanisme de la Ville de Montréal, 04-047, its annexes A, B, C, D, and E, as well as résolution CM-220131, adopting said bylaw. Uh, letter from... The Service du Greffe de la Ville de Montréal with the object Règlement 04047236, Règlement modifiant, modifiant la plan d'urbanisme de la Ville de Montréal 04047, afin de modifier les paramètres de densité du secteur 15-C1 uh, et établir le secteur comme un secteur à construire pour permettre la construction de projets institutionnels, Résolution CM 22 0130 bylaw 04047236 of the Ville de Montréal entitled Règlement modifiant la plan d'urbanisme de la Ville de Montréal 04047 afin de modifier les paramètres de densité du secteur 15, uh, 15C1 et, et d'établir ce secteur comme un secteur à construire pour la permettre de la construction de projets industriels. It's annexes A, B, as well as resolution CM220130, adopting said bylaw, and letter from the service de greffe de la ville de Montréal avec l'objet, règlement 22011, règlement de contrôle intérimaire limitant les hauteurs et les densités dans l'arrondissement de la ville euh, de Ville-Marie, Résolution CM220232, règlement de contrôle intérimaire. Bylaw 22-011 of the Ville de Montréal entitled Règlement de contrôle intérimaire limitant les hauteurs et les densités dans l'arrondissement de la ville de Ville-Marie. It's annexes A and B as well as resolution CM220232 adopting said bylaw. List of bylaws adopted at the Urban Agglomeration Council meeting of March 24th, 2022. 6.2 minutes of the General Committee of Council. Council Shemi. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The minutes of the General Committee Meeting of Council held the 7th of March, 2022, are now tabled and available on the city's website. Thank you. 6.3 Transport Advisory Committee Minutes, which actually should be titled as the Mobility Advisory Committee Minutes. Councillor Bostock. The minutes of the Mobility Advisory Committee, formerly known as the Transportation Advisory Committee, meeting held on February 8th, 2022, are now tabled and available on the city's website. Thank you. 6.4, Councillor Shami. The workforce report for the month of February 2022 is now tabled. Thank you. Uh, 6.5, 6.5, le registre de paiement. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The list of payments. D'Amico. D'Amico, I apologize. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The list of payments for the month of February 2022 is deposed. Merci beaucoup. 6.6, liste d'approbation en vertu de règlement 1507, Conseil Chami. Sorry, Madam Mayor, I was reading too quickly. In accordance with bylaw 1507 on the del delegation of powers to certain employees of the city of Westmount, the list of authorization of expenditures for the month of February 2022 is now tabled. Thank you. 6.7, list of duties on transfer invoices, uh, Councilor D'Amico. La, la liste de facturation des droits de mutation pour le mois de décembre 2022 est déposée. Thank you. 6.8. Again, Councillor D'Amico, Treasury's Activity Report. Conformément à l'article 513 de la loi sur les élections et les référendums dans les municipalités, le rapport d'activité du trésorier pour l'année 2021 est déposé. Thank you. 6.9. Déclaration du trésorier, élection municipale. Encore, Conseiller D'Amico. The Treasurer's Declaration for the November 7, 2021 Municipal Election is tabled. Thank you. I think... Councillor D'Amico, I think you just have to go back to item 6.7. And uh, I think you just uh, read the wrong month. Oh, it's the list of duties on transfers for the month of March 2022 is tabled. Thank you. And we are now at item seven, Councillor Shammy, adoption of council's position on the items to be submitted to the Montreal Agl Urban Agglomeration Council. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move 
that the mayor or in her absence, the acting mayor be authorized to make any decisions she deems necessary and in the best interest of the city of Westmount and its residents regarding the items on the agenda of the Montreal Urban Agglomeration Council meeting to be held April 28th, 2022. Thank you very much. A seconder on this will be Councillor Peart. All in favor? Aye. Carried. Item number eight, again, Councillor Shemi, nomination, uh, the Director of Urban Planning Department. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm uh, happy to move tonight that Monsieur Frédéric No be appointed to the position of Director of Urban Planning Department, Grade 3, effective the 25th of April, 2022, in accordance with the salary recommendation of the Director of Human Resources Department, as stipulated in the decision-making file number 2022-1533, and according to the terms provided for in the working conditions and remuneration of management personnel, that this appointment be on a permanent basis once Monsieur No has completed a probationary period in accordance with Section 2 of the Working Conditions and Remuneration of Management Personnel. And finally... Uh, that's it. That's it, sorry. Uh, and a second on this, I'm sure will be Councillor Peart. Any further comments? We look forward to him joining the team. He's not, we, uh, he came and met Council after a, uh, his interview process, but he's not here with us tonight. But uh, any further comments on this? We oh, look yes. forward to him joining the team. Great. All in favor? Aye. Carried. Item number nine. Again, Councillor Shami. Request for proposals purchase of RWU 90 NS 3X1 conductor 350 MCM cables. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $51,273.24, including tax credits for the purchase of RWU90 NS3X1 conductor 350 MCM cables and to award to Annexter Canada Inc. the contract for this purpose in accordance with this proposal for a maximum amount of $51,273.24, including taxes, the whole in conformity with the contractual documents of the request for proposals. And finally, to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making file, number 2022-1516. Thank you very much. A seconder on this will be Councillor Rue. Any further comments, Councillor Shami? No. All in favor? Carried. Uh, Councillor Peart, item number 10, call for tenders by invitation, professional services of a landscape architecture firm for various projects in the city of Westmount. Thank you, Madam Lameras. Let's get all dispensed with the whereas is. Mm -hmm. I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $64,567.31, including tax credits for the professional services of a landscape architecture firm for various projects in the city of Westmount. Tender by invitation number INV-2022-001. To award to BC2 Group Conseil Inc. the contract for this purpose at its bid price for a maximum amount of $70,709.63, including taxes, the hold in conformity with the contractual documents of the call for tenders by invitation INV-2022-001. To allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making file number 2022-1528. Thank you very much. A seconder on that will be Councillor Aronson. Any further comments? Nope, this is a, a, we often have a standing contract with um, with some professionals to assist us throughout the year with um, with some smaller contracts, so this is one of those. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. Carried. Item number 11, uh, Council Gallery, appel d'offre sur invitation au service professionnel d'une firme ingénieur forestier pour l'inspection et l'évaluation de la forêt urbaine de la ville de Westmount. Council Gallery. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $46,719.44, including tax credits, for the professional services of a forestry engineering firm for the inspection and evaluation of the City of Westmount's urban forest, tender by invitation number INV-2022-002, to award to 9262-0160 Quebec Inc. Trame Vert, 
the contract for this purpose at its bid price for the maximum amount of $51,163.88, including taxes, the whole in conformity with the, the contractual documents of the call for tenders by invitation INV-2022-002 to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making file number 2022-1495. Thank you, Councillor Gallery. I'm uh, Councillor Aronson. Would you like to second this? Sure, I'd like to. Yes, yeah, thank you. Any further comments? No, I explained it before. Yes, before. It's uh, supplementary support with our open forests. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Carried. Item number 12 is again Councillor Gallery, call for tenders by invitation, maintenance of playing fields. Thank you again. I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $71,759.38, including tax credits for the maintenance of playing fields. Tender by invitation number INV-2022-0022. Uh, to award to Peluse Santé Inc. the contract for this purpose at its bid price for a maximum amount of $78,585 dollars and 87 cents including taxes the whole in conformity with the contractual documents of the call for tenders by invitation inv-2022-006 to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision making file number 2022-1529 thank you very much a seconder on this will be councillor bostock any further comments the annual field maintenance, it's a very important contract. Get them ready for our residents and park guests and kids and everybody. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Carried. Item number 13 is <laughs> Councillor Shammy. Call for public tenders rehabilitation of the Hydro Westmount network between PA4 and PA6. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $790,155.50, including tax credits, for the rehabilitation of Hydro Westmount Network between PA4 and PA6, tender number PUB 2020-011, to award to Transelect Common Inc. the contract for this purpose at its bid price for a maximum amount of 908481 Point twenty nine, including taxes, the whole in conformity with the contractual documents of the call for tender PUB 2022-011, and finally to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information, including in the decision-making file 2022-1530. Thank you, Councillor Shami. A seconder is Councillor D'Amico on this. Any further comments? They were just, they, they were the lowest conforming bid uh, for the, uh, for this, uh, project. Thank you. And this is the one that uh, Mr. Grove, this is uh, the contract that Mr. Grove has raised before in question period. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Carried. Item number 14 is call for public tenders restoration of street and sidewalk cuts in the city of Westmount, mm -hmm. Councillor Bostock. I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $353,624.15 including tax credits for the restoration of street and sidewalk cuts in the city of Westmount, tender number PUB 2022-015, to award to Les Entreprises de Construction Ventec Inc. the contract for this purpose at its bid price for a maximum amount of $387,264.54, including taxes, the whole in conformity with the contractual documents of the call for tenders PUB 2022-015 and to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making file 2022-1519. Thank you very much. A seconder on this will be Councillor Gallery. Any further comments? No, just uh, some sidewalk and, and some street repair that is much needed. So this is excellent news. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Carried. Uh, item number 15 brings us to, again, Councillor Bostock, call for public tenders rehabilitation of public lanes in the city of Westmount. 
So I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $386,929.26, including tax credits for the rehabilitation of public lanes in the City of Westmount, tender number PUB 2022-016, to award to Les Pavages Seca Inc. the contract for this purpose in, at its bid price for a maximum amount of $427,240.96, including taxes, the whole in conformity with the contract contract contractual documents of the call for tenders PUB 2022-016 to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making file number 2022-1520. Thank you very much. Uh, seconder on this, the lane contracts, Councillor Aronson, <coughs> any further comments? Councillor uh, Bostock or anyone else? So the lanes that have been identified right away have been Springfield Avenue and uh, the laneway between Green Avenue uh, to Elm. Perfect. Thank you. All in favor? Carried. Item number 16 is a notice of motion bylaw 1587 to establish rates and certain conditions for the supply of electricity for the year 2022-2023. The city clerk. Oh, Councillor Shammy, sorry. Yes. Um. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I give notice uh, of the intention to submit for adoption at a subsequent meeting of council bylaw 1587 entitled a bylaw to establish the rates and certain conditions for the supply of electricity for the year 2022 to 2023. I wish to table this draft uh, said bylaw. And the object of this bylaw? Is to establish the electricity rates for Hydro Westmount customers as of April 1st. The object of this bylaw is also to establish certain conditions respecting the supply of electricity for the year 2022-2023. And this bylaw repeals bylaw 1571 to establish the rates and certain conditions for the supply of electricity for the past year of 2021 to 2022. A copy of the draft bylaw is tabled and available for public consultation. Thank you, and that does not require a vote. A vote. Uh, item number 17, 17, adoption of règlement 1586, visant à établir les conditions de fourniture d'électricité. Monsieur Le Greffier. Alors, je vous signale, Madame la mairesse, que les copies du règlement ont été remises à tous les membres du Conseil et mises à la disposition du public en temps opportun. L'objet euh, de ce règlement est de prévoir les conditions de fourniture d'électricité. Ce règlement abroge l'ancien règlement 1570 visant à établir les conditions de fourniture d'électricité. Merci beaucoup. Est-ce que je peux avoir une déclaration de la part de chaque membre du conseil présent à la fin qu'il ou elle a lu le règlement? So declared, uh, Councillor Chamy. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that bylaw 1586, entitled the bylaw to establish the conditions governing the supply of electricity, be now adopted. Thank you very much. I declare, oh, I'll have a seconder on that motion, will be Councillor D'Amico. All in favor? Aye. Uh, I declare that bylaw number 1586, entitled bylaw to establish the conditions governing the supply of electricity, having been duly adopted, is ordered that notices be given as required by law. Item 18 is Dawson College, support from the City of Westmount. Uh, we will start with Mayor Gallery on that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we the whereas is. Whereas Dawson College is a post-secondary institution offering programs of study to Quebecers of all backgrounds. Whereas according to the Ministry's space allocation standards, Dawson College has a space deficit of over 11,500 square meters. <clears throat> Whereas after more than seven years of collaboration with the Ministère de l'Enseignement Supérieur, Dawson College proposes to relocate the healthcare programs to new premises and whereas an opportunity file has been completed and approved in accordance with the rules established by the Société Québécoise des Infrastructures, whereas the Dawson College project is among the priority projects listed in the Act respecting the acceleration of certain infrastructure projects, an act adopted in December 2020 by the National Assembly of Quebec. Whereas the Quebec Premier stated in February 2022 that this project would be cancelled in favour of other projects in Francophone CGEPs. 
whereas the cancellation of the Dawson College project will have a negative impact on the programs offered to current and future Dawson College students, whereas Dawson College students are entitled to the same quality of educational services as those offered to students in other Quebec, other CGEPs in Quebec. And lastly, whereas there cannot be two classes of institutions and students. I move that the City of Westmount express to the Quebec Premier its deep disappointment and disapproval of the government's decision to postpone the Dawson College Capital Project. That the City of Westmount declare the importance of the project and the need for the school to be treated fairly according to current ministerial standards and therefore that the Gouvernement du Québec maintain that the Dawson College project as a project to be carried out in the next pl plan, Québécois des infrastructures. Thank you very much. I think Councillor Aronson would very uh, happily second this motion, and I think he has some commentary as well that he wants to share. Thank you. I did want to take a moment to hear uh, speak to the students and uh, professors uh, and, and, and alumni of Boston College well, within our community and uh, from, from all over the world to say that uh, this particular turn of events at the provincial level has been extremely disturbing to many of us. Uh, and that we are deeply gratified that this council, along with other municipalities and community organizations across the province of Quebec, have raised their voice in objection to this extremely uh, poorly thought out idea uh, put forward by our current provincial government. I urge my fellow councillors today to vote in favor of this resolution, but more, speaking to anyone who may be watching this, this meeting, or reading about these events in our local newspaper when these events were reported, strongly urge you to take action. To reach out to your elected officials, obviously those on this council are already aware, but in the provincial assembly, as well as at the, at the federal level, and to speak to your neighbors, your friends, and your colleagues who may not be aware of what is happening with Dawson College and indeed with education, particularly with respect to English subjects across the province. This is an issue that concerns all the records, regardless of our background or our chosen language. And uh, I hope that this resolution tonight will be one small step forward to ensuring the quality of education that all Quebecers are to, to which all Quebecers are entitled. And I thank this council for its consideration of this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else want to comment on this, Councillor Rue? Rue. Je peux dire un mot en français au sujet du Cégep Dawson. Euh, je ne crois pas que c'est seulement quelque chose qui affecte la communauté anglophone, mais au moins autant les francophones. Quand on grandit à Westmount, c'est facile d'apprendre l'anglais et sans avoir peut-être pas un bilinguisme parfait, mais au moins un, une compréhension euh, fonctionnelle de l'anglais, c'est difficile d'avoir une ouverture sur le monde. Alors, je pense que c'est une... Euh, Chance qui est enlevée à bien des francophones de pouvoir être à l'aise en anglais et de d'avoir une ouverture sur le monde. Bravo, thank you, Councillor Rue, and I think I echo I, I echo both uh, Councillor Rue and Councillor Aronson and Gallery's comments. This has been a project that we have long worked on with Dawson. The city of Westmount has has long been involved in this. Dawson is a very important part of our community. We have two. We're, we're fortunate to be a destination for schools and to have two sage ups in our city. One of which is Dawson, which if anyone has been in Dawson uh, recently, you know that there is, a, there is a serious lack of space. And the expansion of this, this wasn't a, a make work project. It was this, this space is needed, the, the expansion is needed, and largely to house the healthcare programs that are off, offered from Dawson. So it is, it is shocking, I guess, just after what we've lived through for the past two years, that this would be um, turned into a, a political debate for something that is just so needed for the benefit of the entire province. So um, I'm, uh, I'm sure that we'll have the entire support of council when we vote on this, but it also this motion will be, uh, we are sharing this obviously with our, our m and is Jennifer Macron, but we will share with Premier Legault as well as um, Minister Dubé, as the Minister of Health, I think it's 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 very important that he is shared with us, and also Minister Fitzgibbon, who happens to be uh, a resident nearby, so he understands the importance of um, of Dawson in this community, uh, and how the this is this is a long overdue expansion. So this is uh, certainly we hope that we can get 
get it back on track. So on that note, uh, all in favor? Unanimous. Uh, carried. Thank you. That brings us to the end of uh, that part of the meeting. And now we will have a second question period. And I think uh, Mr. Grove had a question that he would like to follow up on from his uh, from the beginning of the meeting. And anyone else who has a has a question can um, can ask one. So Mr. Grove had raised his hand, and I think he had wanted a follow up. Uh, I'm not sure if he's there. I'm here. Yes. Thank you so much. There you go. So okay. just, I mean, thank you, Councillor Shami, for your response in the in the first oh, question I, period. I, I, I'm I sorry, sure something happened. Grove, uh, that's asking this question. Okay. Maybe, maybe you can have a seat, and we'll call you. Yeah. Up. yeah thank you. Sorry, this is not a perfect system yet. So thank you, uh, Mr. Grove. Sorry about the interruption and back to you. Okay, we're live. Um, so the the, 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 the the preamble doesn't need to be very long, but uh, Councillor Shami, thank you for your answer in the, in the first question period. I'm sorry I wasn't able to follow up, but uh, it seemed I weren't able to continue the discussion. I'm excited about your, your committees and, and, and all these things, but I think as we, we've just seen council now pass, I think it's over $900,000 of electrical uh, pay as you go expenses or, or budgetary items, which I took the liberty of looking up the budget while we were on, uh, on the more formal part of the meeting. And that is more than a third of your overall budgeted items for pay as you go this year uh, done as of uh, April the 3rd. I looked also at the budget. I see we're, we're budgeted to lose $1.9 million this year on Hydra Westmount. Uh, so the, the question originally was, why do we lose money in Hydra Westmount? And is there items inside those losses that are really true city expenses, things that a normal city that is not part of this group of nine in Quebec that have their own system uh, that would, would have to pay anyway? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Lights, things of those natures. So, why is the financial statement created in that way? Like, what is the losses of Hydro Westmount if we if we eliminate those things that we would have to pay if we did not have Hydro Westmount? Is there a way to secure that number? Do you know what that number is? And so I think uh, I think we're going to have to get back to you on that in terms of it's just so that we give you the accurate number. But I think you. It is also can be looked at as an investment in part of it is an investment in infrastructure. Yes, some is is stuff that all cities pay for lamp, you know, light standards, things like that. Um, but I think you're asking a, a, a broader question, if I'm hearing you correctly, about that, that it's a loss, but it is also an investment in upgrading the hydro infrastructure when we redo roads. So when we rebuild uh, a street like Lexington, we're also upgrading the hydroelectrical work, which would, we would not be doing, or we would not be able to up necessarily upgrade that if we didn't control um, our, our hydro program. Councilor Shaman, do you want to yes. add anything to that? But we will follow up with this uh, because you're asking some very important questions and we will uh, we'll bring it back to Council and make sure that we get the right answers for you. So uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Mr. Grove, as I made the pledge to you uh, in the first question period, uh, we'll come back to you with, uh, we'll answer those questions. We'll look at why, where the deficits are and why, and what is the infrastructure? What is, what is uh, the rehabilitation? What's required to keep our network and grid at a safe level to provide the quality of, uh, of a hydroelectric power for our two uh, square meters? our 20,000 population. But I, uh, I will get back to you as Commissioner of Hydro. Um, if I have your email, you'll have a note from me in the morning. I'll be meeting with the administration. And uh, rest assured, we will get back to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And we, we, I do have Mr. Grove's contact. So. And thank you all for, for answering this. Mayor Smith, would you permit me one more question? Certainly. And then we have someone waiting here. So one, one right. more, and then we'll move so on to the next question. On March 28th, the, the provincial government authorized, I think, about $120 million to the central city for their uh, climate action plan. And it seems like everyone wants to talk about climate change and, and the city's response to this. None of that will go to the agglomeration, and therefore none of it will be available to the city of Westmount. This is $120 million directly to the central city 
of which we have no, no to Montreal share. as opposed to the demerged cities. So the agglomeration will benefit in no way, and, and we have no no slice of that pie. I have to I'll have to double check that because I do that I, I would imagine that actually will trickle down through the agglomeration of which we're you know uh, not a huge part, but we do receive we we would be considered in that. But I have to double check that for you. I don't want to give you the wrong answer on that. Okay, well, uh, exciting news if we're a part of it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Good night. Good night. And I think, do we have any more questions? Mr. Fretz, are you all set for the night or you have another question? One last one. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, this is, uh, it goes back to the last meeting. There are very, two very interesting questions came up and the response was, we'll get back to. Um, maybe I missed it, uh, Councillor. Uh, when you're talking about things that are, uh, this was a question from someone called Leah, who, with, who, with whom I've worked, and she asked about pollinators. And I believe you said you would check out with uh, Public Works as to what could be done. Uh, w w did anything transpire? Yes, she was, uh, I don't know if she was in touch with you, but she was also in touch with my office that uh, we've had some back and forth communication about that. Uh, and she, I, my office was, I believe, in touch with her. So, Councillor Aronson, were you as well? I was as well. I, I mentioned earlier meeting with stakeholders. With, with yeah, stakeholders. maybe I missed. No, it's okay. All right, I wasn't specific. Um, uh, that particular citizen in that group that way I met with earlier this week to discuss all the different possible options uh, and uh, and to get their feedback on uh, where we where we best be placing our emphasis. So, uh, to answer your question, uh, yes, there has been action. Uh, on that particular file, uh, and I look forward to continuing to, oh, sorry, I think, uh, uh, continue to, to, to push forward on, on that and related items uh, for the benefit of di biodiversity in our city. Great, thank you. Uh, the other one was, uh, again, um, I, don't, I don't know the person's last name, it was Connor, and I know where he lives, and I know what the, what the problem was, it was what the, the excessive noise, I think, of, of uh, Metro, and uh, I believe Director General, you said you'd get back to him. Did that happen? Or, I mean, I just because I know people, residents in that area, and I was just wondering what, what, what was happening. The fire was ongoing. Okay. And uh, we did speak to the Metro. Oh, you did? Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Great. Thank you. Yes. That's Thank it. you, Mr. Fretz. Okay. Uh, and on that note, the meeting is adjourned. I don't see any other hands raised. So thank you, everyone. Good night. Bonsoir tout le monde.